So another flower which I am obsessed with painting, I just absolutely love, are Icelandic poppies. So not just poppies, not just the regular red poppies, but these Icelandic poppies, the petals are so fluffy, they're just so transparent and all the colors, the pastel-y, oh, chef's kiss. So today we're gonna paint this one here. Uh, based on a photographic photograph I found online. Um, I had a blast painting it and I hope you will too. So let's get started straight away. Today we're going to paint some Icelandic poppies and I'm going to grab a reference photo from Pinterest. If you go into Pinterest and you just type Icelandic poppies, you will be overwhelmed by all these amazing, beautiful, photos of um, Icelandic poppy arrangements. And I'm just gonna pick one today to use as inspiration. So um, you, as long as you don't copy it wholesale and you just use it as a reference for, for inspiration, you don't have to worry about copyright. So I'm gonna pick this one here and um, I might pop this image up or maybe not. Let's see how we go. I'm just gonna use this photo here and we are going to just paint it in a loose, beautiful way. And I'm gonna put that in my stand and let's go into the supplies. So I'm gonna use my Archer's pad, 300 GSM, 100% cotton and, um, oh look, I have an old painting here. Let me just pull that out and we've got a blank page. I've got my two cups of water. I've got my paint, I've got my brushes that I like. I use a Princeton Heritage um, series and I have a flat, a couple of pointy ones and a rigger brush. So use whatever you have. It really doesn't matter for these fluffy, uh, loose watercolor poppies. You just want to make sure you have a couple of large brushes. It could be a large round like this one or a flat. Um, the whole point of this exercise or this, this painting is really loose, having fun, dropping in color. Okay, I've got my two paints. I'm gonna spray it down with water as we usually do. To activate them. And I like to really spray a lot. I used to have a tiny spray bottle which I have to go cha 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 a million times, but I've just moved on to a bigger one and it does the job so much better. Let's start. All right, so um, looking at my poppy, photograph, I'm going to go for a big brush. Okay, my first one, I want to do a big pink one here. So dipping my brush in water and I'm going to my palette and just see what I have left over from a pink hue. And you know what? This pink will do. Whatever pink that's left here from paintings before, going in there, just swirling it around with some water. Maybe it looks a bit dull, so maybe I'll just put a bit of opera rose opera pink and here we go so straight onto the painting straight onto the paper let's pull out some big fluffy petals so this poppy is facing this way just checking my little reference photo and that means I'm just going to make sure that all my petals kind of point back to the same spot in the middle. And you don't have to rush it. You can just really take your time. And see this, these petals here are a bit shorter and these will be a bit longer. So a bit of thin strokes, big strokes. Leaving a tiny bit of white space if you like. And there you have that first poppy um, shape. While it's wet now, let's go in with some darker pink. So grabbing my pointy brush, my 12 round, and dipping into some permanent rose or permanent red, some brands would call it, and just pulling out these little streaks from the middle. And then you can even sort of um, go darker a little bit. Change up the color, maybe grab a coral. And 
and right now it kind of looks like a big mess doesn't look super impressive but trust in the process trust okay so while it's still wet you can spread a bit of the color around there's no harm in doing that I'm not sure if I like this patch of dark in the middle so I'm just gonna spread that around a bit more um, grabbing some orange actually because I don't know orangey kind of tones um, really go nicely with this soft poppy and then you stop whenever you feel like stopping to go on to the next flower okay but remembering this is just the first wet layer which you want to create a nice sort of like beautiful wet on wet bleedy effect going on okay so that wasn't as transparent as i thought it would be this orange turned out to be a little bit strong so i'm just spreading that around a bit but that's fine leave it gonna work on the next one here so i'm gonna go and do a more yellowy um ochre one over here so going into my yellow, mixing my yellow a little bit with, let's see, maybe a little bit of gold. I have a quinacridone gold here from Daniel Smith. And straight away, try to make the poppies sort of all slightly different angles, pointing in different um, styles. I mean, angles and different sizes, I mean. So I'm using that big brush once again and this one here, I'm pointing it this way so that it's just slightly different from the other one. And my reference photo actually doesn't have that, this flower pointing that way, it has it pointing this way as well so I'm changing it. I'm using my own artistic um, license to change it I kind of actually like this color it's nice so going in with a bit of orangey gamboji color okay so this orange was a way too strong i felt so i'm just going to mute it down my orange with a bit of um yellow ochre so let's see how that goes so just creating a bit of shadows here so same pulling out a bit of shadow Mm. Um, going into more of a thicker quinacridum gold here and just dropping that into parts where there might be a bit of shadow moving it around with the belly of my brush altering the shape of the petals if I'm not happy with it you can even dry your brush a little bit and do a bit of lifting if you want a bit of a highlight. So just removing a bit of pigment to create more of the white paper showing the background. Okay, I'm happy with that one there. I'm gonna go and do a more orangey Um, poppy here. So I'm gonna do five poppies, okay? So working in odd numbers, it's always a nice compositional rule. The eye loves odd numbers, or rather, it's just that the viewer will have something more interesting to look at. Touching the flowers creating a bit of a bleed then dropping a little bit of that darker orange here everything feels a little bit too bright at the moment so I'm gonna grab some burnt umber and maybe drop that into this orange poppy Hmm. 
still look a bit icky at the moment, but it's okay. It's all part of the process. While this is still like not terribly dry yet, I might go in here and just drop a bit of yellow near the... I don't know if that's gonna work out. Oops. Might be a bit too wet, that yellow. We'll see. Let it dry. All right, I'm gonna do one whitish one here, a cream colored poppy. And for white, I usually just grab <laughs> the dirty water in this lower right section of my palette where I have a bit of umber, a bit of Payne's gray, or this section. I know, it's very strange. Meaning, you just wash your brush get it really wet and just go in there and grab a bit of that muddy color and then voila you will have some kind of a white flower and you might not be able to see very much this white but it, it it'll show up a little bit more so I'm just using the side of this flat brush to create this poppy that's just looking up so you can't see the the center of this is you see almost the bottom of it. Leave it at that. Okay. The beauty about white flower is don't mess around with it too much. I will have one flower sticking out here. Okay. This one's going to be darker. So I'm getting a scarlet and it's going to be a little bud that is just pointing downwards. So this one's going to be a bright one and I realized that it's going to pull your eye down towards it. So that's just something to be mindful of when you are composing your painting. Uh, we might balance that out a little bit more. So I'm just not going to mess with it. As you see, that was three strokes and I got a bit of dark petal here, a bit of the light one here. Maybe just for the fun of it, add a bit of orange to just give it a bit of a tonal difference. And then maybe just drop the orange here a little bit. I'm not sure if that was a good idea. All right, let me go wipe it down, dry it out. Okay, so now let's add a few stems here and there. Using my size 12 round, I'm gonna grab some green. Green, so set green, just mix it up with the green that's been left over in my palette so that it's not so bright and mutes it a bit and the fun thing about poppy stems is they're all a bit curly whirly squirrely so touching this still wet flower i went in there to let it just get a bit of wet on wet. Ah, a bit of string or hair. All right, this one's going to go right down here. All the way. Shoop. And then the, this one here. Just going to do a little bit of a twist. And that will up here. Bit of a hair stuck to my white flower. There we go. Okay, so now if you're not happy with this bleed, like it's gone like, whoa, too crazy, you can always sort of just mop it up a little bit with a dry brush so that it's not too bleedy but I am fine, just gonna leave it. So, I don't think we can do very much more at this point. If you mess with it now, it will be a little bit messy and the blues will appear. So we're gonna let it dry and come back to do the next layer. Okay, I'm gonna use a size four silver black velvet to do 
the next layer of these gorgeous poppies that are looking so great. Okay, so I don't really have a technique of what to do first, just really quite random. Um, I think it'll be nice to just put a bit of uh, green in all of the center of the flowers. So grabbing a bit of, uh, I think this is my Azo Green from M. Graham. You can just grab any kind of green gold or sap green that you like and just dab them into the middle of the flowers that have a center that you can see. Okay, so I'm just gonna do these two first. And yeah, let's just go into this one. And you can go in like these little tiny strokes round and round. Or you can try different kind of strokes, okay? So after the green, I am looking at the reference and there's like a darker green on the outside. So I'm gonna see how that works, okay? You can wait for that center to dry, but I sometimes don't mind just going in with a darker green. This one's Paraline Green or Shadow Green. And I'm just going around that first. And you can use, you know, Payne's Gray or Black or even a dark blue. Just any darker sort of like color that you have on your palette that's lending itself to that same family of hue. Okay, I like that now. Uh, let's grab a yellow and here I have a, a lemon yellow from Shin Han, PWC Shin Han and it's actually really nice and opaque so this yellow is really quite good for um, layering details like this. You can even use yellow gouache if you have it or just a heavier pigment of your watercolor. It's very light so I'm mixing it with a bit of cadmium to make it sort of warm, warm it down a little bit. Okay, going around this one here and then this one here, my big golden one and it can be a bit messy just have fun okay now that I've got some of the centers done I'm gonna just add a bit of shadow on the petals so for that first pink one here I'm gonna grab that permanent rose a little bit darker so less water, more paint, and just bring down some petally strokes and marks. And where do you put what mark? Just look at your reference photo and let the brush just dance along the flower. Um, it's nice to just go in with another, with a slightly darker shade of that so you can drop a bit of burnt umber into that same plum rose mix and there you have just a tiny bit of darker shadow going on there. So I'm definitely no expert in flower um, layering and I'm still learning experimenting and I invite you to do the same just go for it okay leaving that for a while leaving that so I'm gonna go on to the next one let's let's do this one so this one I'm gonna grab that Quin gold quinacridone gold from Daniel Smith and maybe just dip a bit of tiny bit of Paint gray. Ah, no, what's happened? It's become a green. It's become a really dark green. Don't like that. So, actually, it's not too bad. Okay, let's just bring a bit of burnt umber in there to see how that mixes. Yeah, okay, it's okay. It's okay now. So, <clears throat> same thing. Maybe this time I'm just gonna go from the slightly into the inside and make a little bit of this 
squiggly, wiggly um, lines coming from the middle. And as you can tell, you can see I'm sometimes using the side of my brush, sometimes I'm using the tips of my brush, and using my reference photo, I can see more shadow happening here on the right side of the flower. And slightly less on the left side, but still a little bit. I can use a bit of the shadow to differentiate the front petals from the back petals. I can use a bit of that shadow to create a bit of yep, petals at the back here. I like to bring in just another different tone slightly different hue so a bit of orange a bit of orange or gamboge and then maybe really thin strokes just have a bit of you know your typical flower veins and petal lines that just come out the flower okay there we go is that a bit much if you feel that's a bit much at this stage you still can sort of use wet brush to soften the edges of some of the marks that you might not like so much and that's the beauty of watercolor you can always activate the colors lift them a little bit soften what you don't like and every creation is something new I'm gonna leave that one there going on to this one don't mess around too much this one I'm gonna grab uh, my orange and scarlet lake and to create a darker hue I'm just gonna mix it up with this muddy um, bit of paint here and then just go in and be daring sometimes you just gotta just be a little bit bold be delicate be bold be brave be gentle all the values that you hear um, and the advice that you hear coming from life coaches really isn't it familiar sometimes and uh, same things can be applied to your work of art your creation Stepping back to have a look and going like, ew, what's going on? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. It's all a work in progress. Okay, just playing with different kinds of marks. Thin lines, watery lines. And as you do this more and more, you just start to, um, understand and develop a deeper relationship with the flower with the paint with the water with the brush with your tools ah just notice a bit of paint here it's okay it's okay all right leaving that one alone now okay this layering is taking a bit longer than i anticipated all right these two will be less less um kind of a less intensive because they're just kind of facing up but it's also really fun to do so this one i'm going to use a bit of green actually to create some petal definition here brush a bit of paint off because maybe that was a bit too dark but then layering a bit more because 
Okay, now this is when for me, the reference photo is quite important because I'm really still learning how a uh, flower folds and um, all the little details. So my eye is just going from image to my painting, back to the image. And whatever I see, I just let my brush feel its way. Okay, so I'm noticing it's quite green, so I'm just gonna add a bit of yellow um, to give it a bit of interest. So just dipping into yellow and there. Is it done? No, okay, I'm just gonna go into a little bit of a dark green and just darkening this center. Just a tad. Done! Leave it. Okay, final flower. Final flower to do a details on it is this one here. My reference photo actually doesn't even have this flower. So I'm going to need to wing it a little bit. Okay, going into that scarlet, mixing it with a bit of paint gray and uh, burnt umber. Very simple, just defining each petal with some markings. Uh, for fun, a bit of brighter orange. And there, done, leave it. So, is it done? I think it's done. Okay, we're gonna leave it this time round. I am, so you can just leave it right here and um, come back later. You can always keep working on it. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna try to erase this bit of green smidgy thing. So just spray a bit of water, use a bit of my brush, wipe it, lift, and then just dab. And it's not as obvious as before, but at least it's cleaned it up a little bit. There you have it, Icelandic poppies. And that was it, that's it, that's the painting. I really hope you enjoyed painting this with me. I really did too. It's been a long time since I painted these poppies. They were a phase about a year ago and I think after today, I will start painting a lot more of them. So thank you for watching the video. If you like um, my video, please hit like, hit subscribe, share it with your friends. Uh, follow me on Instagram. I'm at Crystal Tan Art and I'll uh, see you in the next video.